going to a wedding, don't really want to go, stop. You're a reviewer, so sit on your ass, drink Coca-Cola and play video games all day. I'll be the first to admit I hated Duke Nukem Forever mostly because it was fashionable to do so for a few months after its release. No, the game's not as offensively bad or badly offensive as my younger and more naive self would make it out to be, but its age hasn't done it any favours. Not that I've ever been a fan of Duke Nukem anyway, I mostly watch Dad Bad play the games and advise him of hidden enemies and paths to take. My limited experiences of the King were with 3D in its countless editions, in addition to the PlayStation games, but in the case of the latter they were pretty poor. I feel the experience might have been better on PC with better controls and not existed at all. Anywho, in my old age I've become a lot more casual and sometimes need some easy, bland paper mache to sink my fingers into, and Duke Nukem Forever is one such game. Its attempts to be a belly laugh inducing throwback to when we had a hard on for overly compensating video game characters were marred by its modern, grey FPS mechanics and needless padding. Where Nukem was previously a badass, he just became a bad ass, mocking others without realising he had piles and was a doddery old fart, and it was more pathetic than it was funny. The Doctor Who cloned me attempts to resolve this. But before we go any further, I need to give the downloadable discontent disclaimer. This review may contain references and spoilers to the base game, and this content is made in the assumption you've played the original product. I got stuck on a platforming puzzle in forever, so I won't know what happens. I'm not gonna cry a river if I've missed out on anything either. I've already lost two hours, I'll never get back. The Doctor Who cloned me takes place after the base game, staying true to Duke's word about coming back for more, though it will forever remain a mystery whether he intends to kick more ass or get more bubblegum to chew. His quest to find flavoured rubber confectionery comes to an unfortunate halt when he wakes up in a torture chamber, stylized to parody the present day sequences in Call of Duty Black Ops. The vibrator is a nice touch. He's attacked by a T-700 and thrust into an adrenaline pumping quick time event! There's some downtime before the next fight as well, some expositionary dialogue from the DLC's main antagonist, so you've enough time to change your underwear after such a tense intro. Turns out Duke has been cloned by the one and only Dr. Proton, who should have cloned himself given how easy he is a boss, although I wouldn't have been able to make that joke about being the one and only. He's not even the main antagonist, which is a bit of a pisser. For those who aren't aware, Proton Breath was the antagonist of the first Duke Nukem game in 1991, who wanted to take over the world with all his tech bots. The Doctor returns again to destroy the aliens and take over the world for himself. You know, the base game in this expansion was a great opportunity to make Duke a vengeful, bumbling prick. In Forever, the alien should have come in peace, but Nukem wants payback for interrupting a lovely shag or something, thus beginning a new trilogy called Aw Shucks, Duke's gone and done it again. And I guess that's what people said about Forever when this game eventually released, only it wasn't ironic. In this DLC, it would have been awesome to try that idea, but no, we're supposed to take Duke's badassness seriously and be in awe at his ability to beat relatively easy monsters and get shit-faced after a single can of lager. It'd be better to play as Eddie Hitler. No one would ever know. <laughs> I say that this footage of me playing is as pleasant to behold as a bottom feeding scum sucking algae eater. Instead of Dr. Proton trying to redeem himself, we get a similar experience to infighting where his minions and the aliens do battle in a really obviously staged way while you pretend to be amazed. Throughout this 4 hour romp, Duke will be expected to do what he normally does, shoot stuff and run over stuff, now with an expanded inventory of 4 weapons over 2 if you enable it in the options menu. It's pretty handy given the enemy variety and how some weapons are completely useless against some enemies. The new Pregnader launches green globules from a testicle with legs, with a horrible arc that makes hits rather difficult to land. At least the projectiles can't be thrown back at you by an octobrain, like other missile weapons. This only works on biological targets though, so it's virtually pointless against robots. It's disappointing given how it just splats an enemy and doesn't cause them to recoil in disgust or shit out an alien or die in some other spectacular fashion. Another new weapon, and that's arguable, is the Expander, which if you look closely, expands the targets, slowing them and reducing their damage resistance. A second blast blows them to smithereens, which is only fun for a few minutes. You'll be using these brand new weapons and returning classics against not one. Not two, not two, but three new enemies. There's these levitating balls of fail called suicide drones, which appear twice at most, the cyborgs with their ranged attacks, and the Dukinators. Neither of them are particularly interesting when it comes to mechanics. The Duke clones often use fists to harm Duke, rarely if ever using the mighty boot to do him in. Actually, it'd be pretty funny to have one of them chase you while simultaneously thrusting his size 13 boot at you, but alas, it's another curation in the Museum of Disappointment. What I do like is the training scene, where Duke has to impress the other Dukes and prove he's the Duke of Dukedom. It's a shame Duke has to later duke it out with the other Dukes, but I think he says it best. I hate to kick my own ass, but it's gotta be done. This review has only been negative, further cementing the game's disappointing legacy in... Uh, um, cement. Uh, but there are some positives, and they don't take as long to find as in the base game. 
The platforming in the Doctor Who cloned me is greatly improved over that in DNF, with jumps being a lot clearer and not as stingy with collision detection and hitboxes, plus they're bloody good fun, showcasing the typical supervillain hidden bases that we all remember from Saturday morning cartoons. It's not what I'd call challenging, but it is fair. The shrinking sequences return, affecting Dylan quite a bit too, creating opportunities for more height-limited hijinks, the best parts while Duke shrunk her in the driving sequences, riding in a car that spurts out girl talk stereotypes with the obvious offensive twist, meanwhile trying to survive a flaming death trap. But we're still not talking about the greatest improvement of the game, the jokes. DNF could easily be criticised for its hypocrisy and sometimes jarring shifts in tone, but the expansion is consistent with its jokes and more important, its mood. Speak. I've got balls of steel. Negative. Repeat. I've got balls of steel. Negative. Repeat after me. I've got balls, 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 balls of steel. I've got balls, er, uh, balls, balls, balls of steel? Check. Proceed. <laughs> Even the busy work of the burning bush was a different take on the elevator music sequence of an action movie, only slightly longer than necessary and contains potential violence to hookers. Ah oh, well, the only hookers. Oh shit! I, I don't think I'm allowed to say that! We can't necessarily cover the graphics and the soundtrack because I'd actually have to cover the base game first and then compare the two, but I guess we'll just have to break a broom handle off in the arse of this review by giving you my final thoughts. The Doctor Who boned me <laughs> It doesn't fix the problems people may have with the base game, but I can't fault it for trying. Plus, if you're a fan of the Crude King and DNF, this is a hands-down recommendation. As I said earlier, the DLC feels more like a nostalgic cartoon while mixed in the familiar tone with the base game, as opposed to being a grim, dark, semi-serious homage to Duke Nukem 3D. The gameplay isn't at all revolutionary, and the new enemies make the experience less painful, but I was sold on the idea of more chaotic boss encounters in the platforming. I only got one of the two. For all the complaints I've made, I found the entire thing better than forever. The Deathmatch Arena style combat, the goofs, the plot, and the miscellaneous stuff. If you already own DNF or you're on the fence, grab the game and this DLC, but play this first. Just don't expect to see the multiplayer maps unless you're in a large group of friends. Once again, I don't have an outro, and I don't have any funny Duke Nukem references to make, so I guess this'll just have to suffice. Ta-ta for now! Duke Nukem.